news is you may stand and face the directors Pastor Chuchu, the director of the Cape Conference, I hereby humble request that we open officially the Youth Congress for 2023 and also to ask a
youth ministry collaborators you may take your positions and the officers we may move to our right hand side inclined facing the audience please president of the cape conference now the time is yours brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen it is my greatest pleasure to now declare that the 2023 love is a verb Cape Conference Youth Congress is now officially opened. May then the audience be seated. This is you may take only one step forward. This is you may turn rather to your right hand side as we'll be walking out. This is you may to so youth minister calderas you may also walk on your right hand side joining the dc's Shall we bow our heads and close our eyes where we seated and standing? Father in heaven, we have just declared officially open this congress. I now pray a special blessing over this place. We don't know activities that are being hosted here, but dear Lord, henceforth may it be your tabernacle. We pray a special blessing to all the meetings that have started and will still continue at this venue dear Lord. May we see and meet with you here. May decisions that would be lasting be made here. Decisions to make you our friend. Decisions to allow you to govern and take charge of our lives be made here. Oh dear God we pray that as we come together in this fashion, we know that there is war waging. The evil one would want to bury us alive here. But we pray that the angels of light will continue to protect us until we are done with our services here. Bless every program, bless every presenter, bless every preacher that will be participating. May all of them be your mouthpieces and may your will be done when all is said and done your glory be manifested we pray and ask for all this in the mighty name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen this is you may then continue walking out welcome officers may we face each one another each other, brother. You may follow the flag bearers. Wait, wait, my visitor. There you are. Let me pray the saints of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm too fast. Eh? I always think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me greet the church of God in the wonderful name of our soon and coming Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. When, when I'm nervous, I speak fast. Uh, sometimes, yeah. 
Let me just want to take this opportunity to thank you once again for being here. You know, your presence means a lot to us and your presence have shown the success of this Congress. Without you, this Congress was not going to be possible. So therefore, give yourselves a powerful amen. amen. Give yourself a powerful amen. 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 At this point in time, I'm going to give over to the president of the conference, Pastor Lefume, to come and give us some words to talk to us as his children, to talk to us and give us those words of motivation. Fonsi Lefume is the Cape Conference president, and Agambie, he is not alone. He uh, is not alone. Uh, that accompanies him and you know ma'am will soon join us uh, let's just welcome umfundisi ulefume what do we say amen, amen. Fundisi, the podium is yours thank you thank you pastor Chuchu. good day saints Oh, are we not sure we are saints? Good day, saints. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, it is indeed um, a good sight to see the, the, the young people of the Cape Conference, the young at heart <laughs> that are here uh, to worship God for this uh, weekend, starting from yesterday uh, until Sunday. We, we want to say to you, you matter. If, if we're not often, often saying that, I want to often say it uh, in this period uh, until 2025, we want to oftenly alert you to your status that you matter. This is why we are here. We are not here because uh, it is something that we must do as officers of the Cape Conference, uh, as we are here with Pastor Alexander. Uh, we are here because you matter. We want you to, to, to know that. And uh, we, we want to say to our three directors, the directors of the Cape Conference, uh, they may be uh, looking at different regions, but they are all three of them, Cape Conference Youth Ministries Directors. Amen? Of course, uh, Umfunde Sumabenge is uh, fond of the idea that he's just Church Ministries Director. <laughs> because except for WM, and uh, children's ministries those are the only two that he's not in charge of uh, in the region that makes him a uh, church ministries director in, in 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 the cape conference amen focusing in the northern region friends we 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 as a cape conference has just voted in our excom we have voted the strategic plan for the Cape Conference. And uh, if you want to remember it with a way that is going to make sense and be simple, it is focusing on two things, acquisition and retention. We acquire members, souls for Christ. We prepare a people to meet their God. But it is not enough to just acquire those souls, we must retain them. Hence, we're talking of acquisition and retention. We have predicated the, 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 the strategy on five Ps, which are pillars uh, where we, 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 we base our 
KPAs with their objectives. And those five Ps, the first one is prayer. We want to make sure that we are a praying conference and therefore a praying church. Number two, the second P is purpose. We want to purposefully pray. We want to pray purposefully so that we don't beat the air. The third P is people. As this administration, we want to communicate not only rhetorically, but we want to put it into practice that all people groups in our conference matter. That is why there is no corner we are not going to in the Cape Conference. No matter you think you are a minority, to us you are not a minority, you matter. And this is why we aim to interact with all pockets of our conference as constituency uh, when we are interacting with the leadership of all the pockets of our conference to make sure that you feel, you know, you taste the fact that all people groups in our conference matter. The fourth P, processes. The church has got processes. We want to make sure that we respect and we honor and we follow church processes as we do what we must do in all our ministries in the Cape Conference. Let's respect, let's adhere to church processes from the local church right up to the conference. We adhere to church processes. And this speaks to following processes and right procedures when we want to have speakers speak to us, be it a local church, be it a unit, be it a federation, be it a region, be it a conference. Let's follow right processes in securing those speakers. And the last P, professionalism. We are professionals where we serve, at our workplaces, in our communities, uh, we are professionals. We want to make sure that we also remain professional as we do and handle God's business. Right from the local church, right up to the conference, that we treat each other professionally and we treat God's business professionally. We know our theme reminds us of our work. Love is a verb, a doing word. So if you love your parents, you will take good care of yourself so that you stay long with your parents. If you love your spouse to those of us who have spouses already, you will take good care of yourself to benefit your spouse so that you stay long together with your spouse. And if we love the church of God, we will take good care of the church so that the church stays protecting, keeping us safe until we are caught up in the sky to meet with our Savior. If we love our communities, we will take good care of our communities. Where we stay, where we live, where they must see Jesus in us, we will be good citizens, inhabitants, members, of our communities and our country and the world to come. But we will start here. We will avoid what is normally said as being of too uh, heavenly minded and earthly useless. We will continue to do social justice as young people of the SDA Church 
in the Cape Conference. We will continue to impact our communities for the better. And we will continue to have uh, social justice, those community services, whenever we have gathered in this fashion, we will continue to make sure that that community where we have gathered will not forget that there is a Seventh Adventist church. And they, it has young people who love their God and love their fellow men. We will continue to do that. But let me come close now and say, we don't just come together in this fashion as young people just to socialize. But we come together in this fashion to make sure that we remain focused on I will go. And as we go, we're not going because we believe we are perfect. But we go because it is a command for us to go. And when we go, we then agree to be co-workers with God. And when we are co-workers with God in searching for the lost, saving of the souls or salvation of the souls, we participate in his mission as a seeking God who sought us out. Now we go out to seek others out. We continue going. As we go working with God, let's not forget that God will then work on us so we can become who and what he wants us to be. So let me challenge you that uh, next Congress, I don't know when the directors will say the next Congress where we come together as a conference again uh, will be when, I don't know. But let me challenge you and say, when we come together again as a conference, or if you come together as a region, make sure that every young person brings a not yet Adventist friend. Not a non-Adventist. A not yet Adventist friend. Don't come alone. If it means registering your, non, non, your not yet Adventist friend, please do so. God has blessed you with income for you to be able to do so. If it means getting them uniform, please do so. God has given you an ability to do so. Please do it. If it means paying for them to get here, paying for their accommodation, do so. Just one. Just one. Do so. So that you bring them to the foot of the cross. You're not yet Adventist friend. If you can afford to bring two, bring five, bring ten, it is fine. But my challenge to you is just one. You're not yet Adventist friend. The last thing I want to appeal uh, with to us, particularly us young professionals, your parents, your great-grandparents worked with God faithfully. They trusted God enough to pray for your success. And God granted their prayers. Because they worked before God and with God faithfully, you are blessed because they were blessed. I want to ask you, not to be selfish. Selfish how? Huh? Selfish because you want God's blessings to end with you. You are now saying, it is okay for me to be blessed. Let the blessings end with me. Neglecting your children. They are children. Your children's children's children. The fourth the fifth and other generations that will come after you. You are benefiting because your great great grandparents worked with God. They were faithful and they returned a faithful tithe and gave offerings to God and because of the blessings they incurred or were blessed with by God you are now reaping the consequences and the fruits of those blessings but you don't want them to continue. Because you are now saying, God, 
That was enough tithes and offerings that my parents and those before them gave back to you. I'm now stopping the blessing. I want to challenge you and say, when God blesses, he blesses forever. He doesn't change. But his blessings come with conditions. When we obey him, we reap the blessings. Let me just say this to you, paint a picture. In Lesotho, the reservoir dams that are there to service the community or the society with drinking water. It is the only dam I have seen, they are flood gates. They have built a concrete or a slab where water would run if they release it from the dam. When the pressure of the dam builds up and threatens to break the walls of the dam, the manager opens the floodgates of the dam. And when the pressure is released, the water floods out of the dam. And the, the, the space on which they run, you can have five, six cars running in the same direction. Now imagine that flood of water from that dam. And then you interpret the King James language when it says, test me on this. See if I will not open the flood gates of heaven. And that when you receive those blessings, you will lack room to keep it. Now imagine the flood from the, uh, 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 the gates. Imagine it to be blessings flooding toward you. Just because you have trusted God. You have worked faithfully with God. And your children, their children, their children, their children will benefit because you continued being faithful to your God. So please, don't stop the blessings. As I usually say to those of us who are married, both of us, we must return a faithful time. Both of us must trust God. Both of us must work with God because blessings don't come in community of property. So if I don't walk with God, I don't return a faithful tithe, I am depriving my family those blessings that would come because I am doing so. If my wife does the same, she's depriving the family those blessings. So both of us, let's walk with God faithfully. Let's trust our God. He is faithful enough to deliver on his promises. So my challenge to us is that let's change the picture we see because the, the faithfulness uh, in tithe returning in the Cape Conference is now just under 30%. Just under 30%. And I want to appeal to us because this is working class. Majority of us. There are theology graduates in the Cape Conference territory and membership that the conference is unable to absorb. Because we don't have budget to do so. Not because we don't want to absorb them. Now imagine if, 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 if the budget and the faithfulness, the percentage would be 50% of our membership. On ACMS, we are 44,700 and something. Uh, that's not what is on all our church record, but the membership that is on ACMS. ACMS. Now imagine if 50% of that 44,000 was returning a faithful time. There would be no theology graduate who held up back, has said this is a pastor material that would not be absorbed. We are unable to do so. We are unable to do other projects that we need to do because we need that revenue. Stewardship becomes the wheels for this vehicle called church in our context called Cape Conference to save souls. We may have the car, the agency, the church, but without wheels, 
it will not move, not even an inch. So my appeal to us is that let's make sure that because we are Cape Conference, Cape Conference is not the officers, it's not the walls of the offices where we work, but it is us. Let's make sure we change the picture. We trust our God. We walk with our God and reap a blessing. Lastly, those of us who have already blessed, God has blessed them with businesses, huge salaries. Soon this year, we will start building our 2.5-seater hall in Hartenboss. Hartenboss River Resort. 2.5-seater hall. We have already put aside 3.6 million for that project. But the project needs more than 10 million. I'm appealing to all of you to make it happen. God bless you. I thank the president and the executive secretary for blessing this occasion of this uh, Congress 2023 of the Cape Conference. Truly, we know as the youth that we do matter. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And I also want to officially welcome the president in the northern region. I would like to say that on behalf of the youth of Kakamas, on behalf of the youth of Khalishiwe, on behalf of the youth of Uppington, we all know that we do matter because you have allowed for the whole Cape Conference to come and gather up in this place. We feel important and we feel especially blessed that we see all of our people from the Cape Conference that are here with us. Thank you very much and thank you very much, Pastor Alexander, for making it possible. God bless you. Um, I'd like to say within the same tone of people mattering, I've been following on social media and I saw that there's one lady that created a hype and she made everything very exciting, you know, and I thought she deserves a special mention. Yes, Snowfuyo Jongo. Stand up, stand up girl. We'd like to say to you, thank you. Because there's so many people that are here today because of your relentless posting and keep on giving every I even saw you sitting on the N12 and I said whoa this girl is doing the most and I know what you wish for I'm gonna make it come through this afternoon God bless you God bless you thank you very much I would have also done an injustice not to mention that here in the northern region we've got people that support us that keep everything moving and because of that, when we said that the Youth Congress is coming here, one of the first people to come and register was the second lady of the province. In the province, we have the first lady, which is the wife to the Premier, Zamani Sol, and then we have the second lady, which is the wife to the Director General of the province. She is also a very intelligent person holding a master's degree. She is a director herself uh, for strategic uh, development and management at the Department of uh, Roads and Public Works. And today, even yesterday she was here, but today I noticed the fact that from morning manner, she was here, seated down, enjoying each and every service. She registered, she even registered for a pack. She has a cup, she's got everything. And I said, it would be an injustice if I do not mention her. Sis Babsi Begabege, please stand up so that the youth can welcome you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presence. And as you've heard, because I know you are a very established businesswoman. The president says we've already laid 3.5 million. I like your spirit of wanting to be a first. I know you're going to do great things for us so that we can have that 2.5 seater. 
but no pressure no pressure everything is good but uh, thank you very much hopefully the dg will come and join us as well tomorrow is a very busy person but we need to acknowledge our big people and make sure that we give them their place because they are the ones that can make things go round that is why even today we got meters per per which cost us over 200,000. But because of the influential people that we have, they cut that figure in half. Let us please give a round of applause for all of our Northern Region people that help us to have this thing happening. Thank you very much, thank you very much. I have a very, very simple task. And that task is to actually welcome the speaker that is going to be talking now with us. I'd like to call contract to come to the front. I researched that word. It means the one that speaks with a tone that shows that they have done wrong. Hey, big English, I tell you. So those are the sinners that are going to speak in a tone that shows that they have done wrong. Thank you very much, contract. And at this hour, we have a son of the soil. He is born here in the Northern Cape hails from Warrington, and he was our main speaker for last year's Congress in the Northern region. Every time we call him, he answers his phone because he always has a good experience with us. I know today I'm not his best person because I've made him wait since 12 o'clock, but I'm sure we're gonna be best friends again when he finishes delivering the sermon. His name is Tifo Manyang. Now, ladies, in the morning I heard a call, and that call said that we must all embrace each other and go with each other moving forward because we are a community, right? Pastor Manyane is not a community. But he said to me, Pastor, with what I see happening in the Cape Conference, I think when this conference finishes, I am going to be a community as well. I don't know who's the lucky lady, but I promise you, whoever you are, you have broken a spell. We thought this man would never ever get married, but I see something good is about to happen in this Congress. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the next voice that you will hear after contrite is the voice of Pastor Tefo Manyane. He's the pastor in the Rand district of the TOC. Thank you very much. One, two. One, two. One, two. Let me.
the space and time to come and share a word or two together with you. Um, I'm, I want to let you know very quickly that I'm very hungry. <laughs> very, very hungry. And I know you are too. Um, I know you came here at around eight and you've been sitting until then. So I'm going to do you a favor, and I'm going to cover this thing between 10 and 15 minutes. Amen. Amen. Is that long? Because we can take it lower. <laughs> we just take, take it 10 to 15 minutes, and then we have a prayer, and we depart in the name of Jesus. Um, thank you very much for having us and having me here, I really appreciate it. I'm not one of those that are very heavily and often invited, and so when I'm invited, I take pleasure in it, and I take it as an honor and a true privilege. I wish to read together with you the parable of the Good Samaritan. Um, and I thought about this thing about a week ago, uh, and <laughs> I wanted to take a, a risk with it. Um, this morning when I went through my notes again, I thought, let me not tell the people what the risk is, but I want us to maybe, so that you keep me on check. I, I, I wish for us to capture our talk today simply, the Good Samaritan and the principle of Ubuntu. And I read together with you here, the parable of the Good Samaritan from the book, Luke chapter 10, from verse 25 to verse 37. And then the Bible reads as follows, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law, and what is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down on that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and he set him on his animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come back again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And he said, he who showed him mercy, then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. God and our Father in heaven, we just read your word and we ask dear master that for the next few minutes you may speak to us in a way that you'd want us to know and understand you in Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. 
Um, this weekend, we are on the subject, love is a verb, and I wish just for us to spend a few minutes on this, and then we depart in the name of Jesus. The book of Luke is, um, when you read chapter 1 from verse 1 up until 4, you will discover that the book of Luke is actually a research report. Are we working together? Just say amen once in a while so that I don't feel alone here. Huh? Thank you. The front row here is for me. So if you don't do that, my boys and girls will do it for me. I will. So the, the, the book is essentially a, a research report. And the report is presented to a man called Theophilus. Luke is a very bold and brave man. Because, um, look, there, there, are, there are four Gospels. There's Luke, there's Mark, there's John, and which other one? And Matthew. And when Luke writes to Theophilus, he says to him, my, my good sir, I know that you have heard all these things and you were taught on these things. But I took it upon myself to do a thorough research and give it back so that, and, and, and when I give it back to you, I am giving it back to you in an orderly manner. In other words, all these other things that you are reading, they are there, they are written, but they are not thoroughly researched and they are not orderly presented. So what I am bringing to you is a thoroughly researched subject and it is written in a very orderly manner here it is and then he begins to write the gospel and and he writes this research report and he gives it to Theophilus but 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 um when you look at Luke's report it actually covers a number of theological themes but I want us to focus just on this one Luke pictures Jesus as a man who is very compassionate and that that is the one theme that Luke covers and he covers it in such a way that he tells a story Jesus is not just compassionate but Jesus is one who look pictures I mean look paints a picture of a Jesus who is much more concerned about the reject and dejects of society so when look look ministry of Jesus his focus really is on G a Jesus who pays attention to a people who are not paid attention to when you read the book of Luke there are a number of people that Luke covers and the first of those is when you read the Gospels four of them Luke is the one man who covers women more than all others come with me because when you look at it at the beginning of the gospel, and it's fine, we know all these things, but Luke opens the gospel by mentioning Mary and Elizabeth and Anna. He keeps on um, highlighting the important women in the Bible. He mentions the woman of Naim. Matthew also, I mean Luke also um, covers the crippled women that we find in Luke chapter 3 verse 11. He speaks of the woman that anoints Jesus' feet. He speaks of Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Susanna. And, and these women, Matthew, I mean Luke mentions, not because they are women, but he mentions because apparently, out of all the people in society, these are the women that dug deep into their pockets to support Jesus' ministry. And so Luke covers this, and I, I dare say, if I'm offensive to anyone, I apologize. I dare say that Luke's research on Jesus actually demonstrates that women are very important in society, and they're important in the church, and more than that, they're important in the eyes of God. That's why Luke covers this thing. Number two, Luke covers the poor and the rejects. If that water can reach me very quickly, I'd be very happy also. So Luke covers the poor and the rejects. And this, this, this is captured in what we call the manifesto of Jesus that we find in, 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 in the book of Isaiah. But in the book of Luke, it's, on chapter, it's in chapter 4, verse 11, where the, Jesus simply says, the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It has appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Then he mentions all other people that he's supposed to, um, the gospel is supposed to set free. Are we walking together? We are five minutes into it, and then the next five minutes we'll deal with the text and we sit down. Luke 
also records a point in Jesus' ministry where Jesus had the opportunity to address a case of an outsider, a case of tribalism, a case of ethnocentrism, and if you like, an, a case of xenophobia, even. And look at it in this manner. He, when we get to the chapter that we have just read together, chapter 10, Apparently, there was a debate between Jesus and a lawyer. And the lawyer asks Jesus a question. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? What is it that I shall do to inherit eternal life? What outside action, what physical action? That's what, because the man wants to know what can he do to inherit eternal life. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says to him, Jesus does not answer the question. He asks a question. He says, what, is, uh, what does the law say? What is written in the law? And what is your interpretation of it? And the man then answers by, by giving Jesus a, a, a summary of two biblical texts that we find in the book of Leviticus 19 and that we find in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, and with all these things, and then you will shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right. And, 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 and Jesus says, you have answered rightly. Go do that and you will inherit this eternal life that you want to inherit. And the man now wants to be smart according to the Bible, and he says, but who is yes, my neighbor? That, that, that's where the entire story then begins. Who is my neighbor? And when he asks this question, please remember that this man is a lawyer and he has studied the laws of the Jews. He knows exactly who his neighbor is. And in the Jewish society, your neighbor is, exact, is literally the person that's sitting right next to you. Your neighbor is a Jew. If he is not a Jew, he is called a stranger and so when G in fact it, it the, the, the concept of a neighbor was so bad in the Old Testament that God had to tell the Israelites that if a stranger moves into your house treat them nicely take care of them otherwise if they are not if, if, if God does not tell the Israelites that a stranger in your house must be treated nicely they would have never treated them well in fact, in the Hebrew, if the neighbor does not look like you, is not dressed like you, does not speak like you, that person would automatically be met with hostility. And so that's why God has to tell them that even those that don't look like you, treat them the way you would want to be treated. And it sounds very familiar that there are people who don't look like us. Don't like us. We don't treat the same way. And I want to put this clearly. Jesus says to him, love your neighbor. And the man says, who is my neighbor? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. What Jesus is saying is that if it is not good enough for you, then it can be good enough for them. If the bread is too stale for you to eat, then it should be stale for them to eat. If the clothes are too worn out for you to wear, then somebody else should not wear them on that account. Who is my neighbor? And this man says, who is my neighbor? Who is that person that deserves to look like I do? Please come with me. That's the question. That who is this person that deserves what I have? Why can't they get lesser of what I have? Jesus says, treat them the way you want to be treated. And I want to tell you the gospel truth. And this is where I begin this thing. There is absolutely no merit in loving the lover. There is no merit in loving that which everyone loves. There is no merit in taking care of me because I am part of your group. It's simply, look, the, 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 there is absolutely no merit, my good sir, in loving a person because you know them. Look, there is no merit 
in loving everything. When, when, when somebody's big is here, we all flock to what's there. There is no merit in that because everyone can do it. So Jesus says, look here. Let me tell you a story. There was a man who was walking down the road. And he was met by thieves. Jesus paints this picture. And this, this one element that I want us to deal with and then I leave this thing. Jesus says, these gentlemen that meet him on the road, they beat him up. Not interested in that. But he says, then they strip him naked. Hmm. And they leave him to die. My favorite part is they strip him naked. Then Jesus says, there are people who came by and walked here. Who of them showed this man mercy? I want us to look at this thing of they stripped him naked. The reason why Jesus strips the man naked was that he was stripping him of his identity. Because back in the day, a Jew would be known by what they are wearing. A Samaritan would be known by what they are wearing. A Jewish lawyer would be known by what they are wearing. A Jewish peasant would be known by the type of cloth they are wearing. So Jesus strips this man naked and he strips him of his identity. He is stripping him of this because, because if we see him wearing blue on a Sabbath, then we will stop and say this one is going to the Congress. He is one of us. But if he is naked, there's a possibility that we may pass him. So Jesus strips him naked so that whoever comes and helps him does not help him because he looks like them, but he helps him. But he helps him because he's a human being. Ubuntu. He is a human being who is on the road. Who needs help? Jesus steps him naked so that he teaches the disciples or the lawyer that in this world we want to help you because you look like us. And that's the general trend in the church and even in the community. Because you look like me, then you can help. Oh, come on. But Jesus says, but Jesus says, this man was on the road and he was naked so that so that we we don't rob him of help because of what he looks like we also don't credit him with help because of what he looks like we do it simply because he's a fellow human being who is lying on the road Brethren, I need to just stop here and tell you once again, there is no merit in loving me because I'm wearing blue. Love me because I am and because you are. I am because you are and I am you are because I am. The principle of Ubuntu. Here is the challenge that I want to pose to you. Imagine this together with me. These guys are thieves. They are sitting. They have no specific target. They, ha they, are, they have an assignment. They don't have a target. The assignment is to rob whoever comes here. Whoever walks here will be robbed. That's the assignment. They are sitting and they are waiting for whoever. The only thing that the man, nameless man, the nameless naked man, his only mistake was that he walked the road earlier than the Levite. Had he stayed home just a bit and the Levite was on his way to church, the Levite would have been the one on the ground. The mistake is one. He woke up too early. He took the road too early and so he fell among thieves. Let me tell you, brethren, you must do for me. That which you would expect me to do for you if I found you on the ground. And that's it. That's the simple basic thing. Not because I am this guy. Ugh, simply because you and I share an image. So the Bible says Jesus strips the man naked. Says he was a naked man lying on the road without an identity. In fact, Jesus further makes it worse. He mutes the man. 
mm, come with me. He mutes the man. Because the man cannot even scream for help. Because if he had a voice, the accent may be Jewish, or the language may be Hebrew, or the language may be Kosa. And I, as a Tswana man, would leave him to the side and say, let the Kosas take care of their own. By the way, I'm Kosa also in Tigu Gabon. So that Jesus mutes the man also so that he does not have a voice. He does not look like anything that we want to help. So Jesus leaves him there nameless, faceless, naked. Says he's lying there. The Bible says, then Jesus says, then along the road, there came a priest and a Levite. The Bible says, then they arrived where the man was and both looked at him, went to the side and continued to walk. Now, you and I, my good sir, I imagine, I imagine that this guy was lying there quietly and there's a high possibility that he was dead so you must understand the print the, the levites the levites and the priests um, um, behavior towards the man that he could be dead and by touching him we could be defiling ourselves so that's that's their first problem second problem is whatever happened to this man here could happen to me also. So let me not waste my time here. Let me save my own life and cross to the other side and walk. So I, I don't know, my English is very limited, Blosse, but I think the man has a moral. He, he cannot touch a dead person because he's going to defile himself. So he moves over to the other side. But I want to suggest to the Church of God this afternoon that his moral dilemma should not have been a reason for him to let the man die. And if I were to say something to the Church of God this afternoon, I would say, please make sure, try by all means not to cross the path and go on the other side. Come, I don't know, can you say it better than me? <laughs> try by all means. In the struggles of life, where you see another person dead and about or about to die, try by all means not to cross the road to the other side. What I'm basically saying, try and get off your high donkey, go down to where people are and help them in this country. Man, you, I remember, I, I remember this thing in the morning. You know, um, my I, I was raised by my aunt, and when we ran out of sugar. When we ran out of sugar, my aunt would give me a cup and send me to the neighbor's house and say, Tzamaho Adima Swekir, go borrow a bit of sugar. And for, I, I thought about this this morning. I went there and I always came with sugar. But what, what's not, what, that, 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 that's Ubuntu, we are helping each other out. But what kills me around this story is that every time we needed something from home, we always carried a container to the neighbor's house. Please, please. We, we carried, you, you went to ask for sugar, holding your own cup. You don't go empty handed and say, my mother says I must come borrow sugar. And then she goes to the drawer and takes, no, no, no. She, 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 she sends me with her own cup because in her head, she knows that the neighbor will not look aside when she does not have sugar. Come with me. She knows that when I go to my neighbor, asking for help my neighbor will not turn their backs on me because the concept of ubuntu is i have sugar today i may not have it tomorrow so let me give them 
so the Bible says that Jesus says that these ones move to the other side. And oh, man. Oh, let me just quickly say this. Look, in the face of injustice, in the face of hunger, in the face of depravity, in the face of things that are not going well in the lives of other people, learn the principle of Ubuntu. Don't cross the road. Go down to where they are. Don't cross the road. Stick to your path and help them because today it's them, tomorrow it's you. And you would want them. Ah, man, we sing a song in this church. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Is it not funny and ironic that we ask God not to pass us by, but when it is time for us not to pass others by, we are very smart and quick to do it. Pass me not. Apply it to the life of others. And the Bible says that they went on onto the other side. Let me tell you something very important. In the face of injustice, say something, do something. For an injustice not solved today is an injustice that will be experienced tomorrow. If you don't deal with it today, you will experience it tomorrow. And so the Bible says that Jesus then says, Then there came a Samaritan. I want to close it very quickly. Then there came a Samaritan. The Bible says, He stops. Ah. Ah. He stopped. That's the first thing that he does. He stops. He gets off. He stoops. He dirties himself. He covers wounds. He pours oil. Ultimately, he uses his muscle to pick the man. He uses his strength to pick the man up and puts him on his very own donkey. First thing he does is he stops. And please, the, this man was not an emergency worker. Not an emergency caregiver. He was not going around looking for people who have fallen along the road. He had his business somewhere and he was attending to it. And it appears that it was urgent because when the man that he had taken care of was not healed the next day, he says, take care of him. I am coming back. There's other business that I need to. He, oh my goodness, he disturbs himself for the sake of the other. He spends what he had. For the sake of the other, my favorite part of it is that he... Oh, my goodness. Is there, is there someone here who can, for my sake... Who is... To just stop and ask me, stop and ask, why are you always wearing the same suit? Is there someone here who can stop and ask, have you eaten? Is there someone here who can just stop and ask? And when we answer, we have not. And somebody says, I, I, don't, I don't have much. But what I have, I will share with you. The principle of Ubuntu. Ah, oh, my goodness. And he goes down on his very knees. Mm. Close it. Who blossom preach beautiful things about the God that stoops. There's only one way. There's only one way. There is only one way God will ever be able to lift us up is when He has to stoop first. For God to lift us up, He has to stoop. And that's what He did with Jesus, by the way. Come down to our very own level so that He may lift us up. And the Bible says, then He carries the man and He puts him. On his donkey. Hmm. Let, me, let me just play a lot around here just so that we, yeah. Uh, the Bible says he puts him on his donkey. I imagine, <laughs> I imagine the man being pulled to the inn where he's going to be taken care of. I imagine the innkeeper standing by the gate and seeing a man on a donkey and a man pulling a donkey and in his excitement, when he gets to the gate, when the man gets to the gate with his donkey, in his excitement, he passes the one who pulls and goes to the one on top. Because naturally, because naturally, we are attracted to people who are on. 
and he leaves the man on the ground running to the one on the donkey because in his head he's preparing to take care of a rich man on the donkey but little does he know that the man on the ground is the man that should be on the donkey there is no up up look yet there is no difference between he who is on the ground and he who is they look like ah oh, come on blessed what the man does what the good samaritan does is that he gives the broken man his identity and his identity is confused by this one that this one must be that one and that oh goodness and he wants that when we are done with each other and we have taken care of one another none of us can tell here that this one is the broke one and this one is one who has money that when we are close together here because of your help i look like you and you look like me who is my neighbor and why do they deserve what i have they deserve it because you even you yourself did not deserve the death of christ but he did it for you anyway that we may look alike in this place Oh God. I, I, there's, there's a burden in my heart, man, of a people who, okay. Jesus takes the man to the inn and then he says, take care of him. And when you are done, I will come back and repay you. I know you like rewards, but my thing is here. Take care of him. Take care of him. Brethren, I want to tell you the gospel truth. There's nothing I like more than looking good on a Sabbath. Yeah, you should know. You should know. You're my friend. There's nothing I love more than that. And I know that you also love it. I want to look good on a Sabbath. But I learned that suits cover a lot of hurt. Because on a Sabbath when I come to church and I come to stand in front of people, they must say that the pastor looked good. They must not say the pastor looked worried. And I'm saying this because I know that many of us cover, carry a lot of hurt and we cover it so nicely with our beautiful stuff. And, 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 and some, some spirit found us in the streets of Kimberley, streets of Kwebeha, streets of Venda, and wherever we were, and brought us into this place. And the instruction to, one, to each and every one of us here is simple. Take care of them. And it's a painful thing that we experience in the church, that when we are brought here to be taken care of, we are hurt even more. It's a sad thing that we are broken even further. It's a sad thing that we are destroyed even. But the instruction is simple. Just take care of him. Can we learn to take care of one another? It's a simple thing. And I'm going to close it in this manner. I, I know I said a lot of things, but what, 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 what my point is, Ubuntu Boto, does, it will not cost you a thing to kneel in front of another to lift them up will not hurt you in any way Boto, Ubuntu. Do nice things for other people. Take care of them. Mm, who is my neighbor? My neighbor is the woman that walks into this church every Sabbath with a bruised eye. And we know that it's bruised because of this and that. But we walk away. Who is my neighbor? My neighbor is the child that we know that they don't have school shoes. And we, in our closets, our children have as many shoes as they wish. They, we actually fought with them today at church. Not those ones, those other ones. But there is one in church who does not even have a choice. Who is my neighbor? My neighbor is the person, is the lady at work that I know that this one, we are working in the same office, but she has a lot of financial problems. My, my neighbor, who is my neighbor? My neighbor is the person that I passed by the robots who was holding a placard saying, no food, no work, please help. And I had it in my car to help them, but I passed them by. Who is my neighbor? My neighbor is, oh man. 
Who is my neighbor? Just take care. Just, just take care of them. Here is the conclusion. I'm closing it in this manner. Closing it in this manner. And so the man is left there at the inn. And I suspect because he was moving from Jerusalem. Chief, play the thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> and here, here he is, here he is the thing, here is the thing, here is the thing. Here is the thing. I suspect because he was moving from Jerusalem to Jericho, he may also have been a Jew. The surprise to the Jewish man who's lying on a bed in an inn when he wakes up and he asks, where am I and how did I get here? And the innkeeper says, a Samaritan. A Samaritan brought you here. Because you and I know that Jews and Samaritans had their own problems. And when he wakes up, the innkeeper says, you being a Jew, were brought here by a Samaritan. I wish it was a movie where the innkeeper would tell him that your Jewish priest left you to die. Your Jewish Levite left you to die. The entire congregation that was moving between the streets of Jericho and left you to die, but a Samaritan who you despise picked you up and brought you here. And when he finally understands it, he then gets to a point where he realizes that who is my neighbor? My enemy is my neighbor. So who is my neighbor? If my enemy is my neighbor, then who is really my neighbor? There's no Jew, no Gentile. There's no white, no black, there's no Tosa, no Zulu. But all of us at this place together, we come together to worship the one true God who created us. And the, there is neither this nor that. Get off your high horse and go on your knees for the sake of the other. Who is my neighbor? I charge you. I charge you to be the hands and feet of Christ. I charge you to take care of one another. Take care of them. Can we stand together as we pray? Amen. Precious Lord in heaven, Thank you, dear God, for this time that we spent in your house, reading your word, trying to make sense of it and applying it to our lives. So this afternoon, we ask you for one thing, dear Master. Teach us to love one another. Teach us to care for one another. Teach us to be kind. Enable us to be helpers. We also want to thank you, dear God, that you found us. Beaten and bruised by the things of this world, lying on the sides of the roads, you found us. Collected us and brought us into an inn where we will be taken care of. These are human. They say things that are hurtful. They do things that are hurtful. But we are to ask, dear Master, that may this place that you have brought us into turn and be a safe haven for us. We have been broken far worse than we had ever been broken outside of the world. We have been broken in here. So we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that may things go well for us in this place. Soften our hearts. 
Teach us to have an eye that pushes us to compassion. Teach us in the mighty name of Jesus to get off our high horses and get down to the levels of other people. where we come together for entertainment and the likes. May it truly be a place where we are trained to be our brother's keeper. May we learn indeed by speech, by deed, by all things possible to be lifters of one another. Thank you for stooping low for our sake and for lifting us up. Now we know that there is only one way to be of help to one another that we should stoop. So be with us as we endeavor to do such. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank uh, Pastor Manyane for such an inspiring sermon. I was deeply moved and I'd like to just say that there is one without a voice as well that was coming to Congress and when they were in Bloemfontein waiting for their lift to come and pick them up, a car stopped right in front of them and she could see that this is not going to be a welcoming call. So she started running and they took her clothes, took her everything, took her uniform, and she says she even wanted to go back home. But for some reason, she was encouraged to come and join us here today. And because of that, and because of this sermon, we thought that we could put love in action. We've got a very nice bowl, a golden bowl that is right there at the back so that as we exit, Amen. we think about her and we see what we can do to put love in action so that she can enjoy the holy hours of the Sabbath with her mind at rest, just like all of us are. And I know God is going to use you in a special way, just as he used the main servant, Pastor Tifo Manyan. I'd just like to invite Brother Prince to come through and do a few announcements, and afterwards we'll hear the voice of Brother Mvuzo with the band as they usher us out. I'd ask all of us also to remember our sister Mayaba. She fell in the shower. Her, back, her, boat, her, her, her back was almost broken, but she was discharged this morning. If we can, just go past her and say, hey, what's up, girl? How you doing? Just don't hug her. It's all good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Right, we have a um, slight change in our program. We will be starting at 6.30 tonight with our service. So we expect that you come 6.30. And when we come at 6.30, because our visuals are being recorded in the camera, we ask that you don't occupy that side. When we come for the service, please, Let's fill these chairs first, and then if we are full here, we can move to that side. There will be ushers as we come in with the green bibs. Please let's listen to their direction and advice as they will be coordinating the seating. We won't be running a coffee bar tomorrow. The coffee bar ends tonight. We will run it after Sabbath, but during the Sabbath hours, we won't be running it. And all music groups, music groups, please remain seated for a little chat right after the service. Mengos, would you please come? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, according to our program, uh, this is a time where people can go and explore Kimberley. 
Kimberley is a beautiful place. We have just gone out now to go and negotiate with um, the big hole. They've given us a, a, a very beautiful price, very beautiful price. Um, to view the big hole, they are going to, you start off by uh, watching a video, a short video that tells you history of the big hole. Then you view the hole itself and they explain to you what happened, how was it dark. And then from there, you are, they, they take you underground and you experience the whole mining experience, the blasting and whatever. And they show you diamonds. If you haven't seen a diamond, I think you can't miss this one. And uh, there's a whole exp excavation. You are only going for a special price that they've given us. It's 100 rand for the whole tour. 80 rand if you just want to view the, the hole. But for uh, identification, it's either you have a black tag or the pink tag or your name tag. Name tag, those three things. Those are the things that, are, that they are going to use for identification. We are also going to, um, there's a, the first Seventh-day Adventist church in, in Africa, it's in Blacking Street, not Black Street, Blacking Street. It is open if you want to go and view it, you can go there. They are in Beaconsfield. We have been, we are in partnership, um, Department, um, Northern Cape Tourism Authority. They gave us some support, and as a result, they've left some uh, brochures outside, leaflets outside. Please pick one as you are outside and to see other places in Northern Cape. As you walk out, there will be a video that will be played that shows the places of interest in Northern Cape. Do you know that Northern Cape has a beach? We have a sea. Yes, in Port Norloth. So you'll see all the extraction, uh, interesting places that you can visit here in Northern Cape. Thank you. We'll see half a six. And the ball. I see